my name is Crystal Tisch. I'm the Behavior and Training Manager at the Blue Ridge Humane Society. Today I'm sitting in my living room in my home in Hendersonville, North Carolina, and I've got my black and tan Doberman Ludo helping me out. Today I want to talk to you about how to safely hike in the heat with your dog. We all know that summer is a great time to get out and enjoy the natural beauty of North Carolina. And naturally, we want to take our furry friends along with us, which is great, but there are some precautions we should take so that we're sure we're avoiding the risk of heat stroke in our dogs. So first, let's talk about what level of heat is comfortable for a dog. Once the weather gets up to 70 degrees, that's where the risk of heat stroke begins. Now, there are some things that we can do to mitigate that risk, and I'll talk to you in a few moments about how to do that. But once the weather gets over 85 degrees, we really need to consider if it's safe to be bringing our dogs along with us or maybe they need to sit this one out. So here are my tips and suggestions for safely hiking in the heat with your dog. First, we want to be sure that we are acclimating our dogs to the warmer weather. Even if your dog is used to taking long hikes in the cooler weather, once the weather starts to warm up, we need to be sure we're taking the time to let them get used to the heat. So that usually means cutting back on the length of their hikes and offering more frequent rest and water breaks until they can tolerate the heat better. They'll be able to get back to, up to their normal hiking length. It just takes some time. The other thing that we can do is to hike at cooler times of the day. In the summer, in my opinion, the best time to hike is going to be in the morning. The sun's been down for several hours and it's a lot more comfortable. And personally, I really like it because it's a lot more quiet. There's a lot less traffic. And I just think it's a really great way to get your day started by going on a hike with your dog. Now, if that doesn't work with your schedule and you prefer to hike in the evening, you can do that. And just be aware that you'll have less time to go hiking with your dog before the sun goes down. Another option is to plan your route for shade. It's actually 10 to 15 degrees cooler in the shade. So if you can find a nice shady route, it's going to be a lot more comfortable for you and a lot safer for your dog. Luckily, North Carolina's got a lot of great shady trees, so it's really pretty easy to get a nice shady hike. Another thing you want to be sure you're doing is providing lots of water for your dog to drink. I normally bring about twice as much water for my dog in the summer, and I also bring a little dog water bowl, obviously, so he can drink out of it. And then I want to be sure that I'm not letting him drink out of any natural bodies of water. There's a lot of giardia and other bacteria in water that can really be harmful for your pet. So be sure they're only drinking from water that you're providing them. And along the lines of water, if your dog really likes to swim, you may want to consider planning a route that's got a dog-friendly swimming hole in it. Water is a really great way to cool your dog down. Now, if you know your dog's going to try to drink out of the water, it might not be a good idea. But for all other dogs, it's a great way to cool down. And lastly, you may want to consider purchasing a cooling vest for your dog. A cooling vest uses the power of evaporation to cool your dog down. These are a vest that we get wet and that we put on the dog, and as the water evaporates, it helps to cool them down. They've actually found that these help keep the dogs three to four degrees cooler. So you may consider purchasing one of these. Two that we recommend are the Kurgo Dog Core and the Roughwear Swamp Cooler. So check it out and see if it might be a good option for you in keeping your dog cool. If you have a brachiocephalic dog, which is a dog with a shortened snout, such as a pug or a boxer or a bulldog, be aware that these dogs are less efficient at cooling themselves. So you may want to take shorter hikes or offer more frequent rest and water breaks. If you have a dog that's very young or very old or obese, these dogs are also at an increased risk for heat stroke. It's really important to know the signs of dehydration and overheating in your dog so that we can get to it and cool them down before it turns into a heat stroke. Heat stroke can be fatal in a dog. And what a heat stroke is, it's where the dog's temperature becomes so high that their body cannot regulate it to a normal temperature anymore. So let's first talk about the signs that your dog is getting dehydrated or overheated. So first, your dog's normally wet nose may become dry, maybe their gums become dry, um, their eyes might look sunken in or in dry, their tongue, which is normally a pale pink color, might be bright red. Another thing that you can check is for dehydration is skin elasticity. So if you don't know how to test that, you just take the dog's skin and pinch it and then let it go. And a normal dog's skin will snap back into place pretty quickly. As they become dehydrated, 
it's much slower to respond. So I recommend that you do this when your dog is well hydrated so you know what the normal response is for your dog. So that way you can kind of do a check as you're hiking to see where your dog is as far as hydration. So signs of actual heat stroke would be nausea, vomiting, they might be unresponsive, so they might normally respond to their name, but suddenly they're not listening to you, they seem kind of out of it. They may have difficulty breathing or an increased respiratory rate, increased heart rate, profuse drooling, weakness, or even collapse. So if you think your dog may be having a heat stroke, the first thing that we want to do is get them into a cooler area immediately, preferably something with the AC. And then we want to take a cool wet rag with lukewarm or cool water and wet the dog down. You can concentrate on their ears or their paws or their belly and really get them nice and wet. And then if you've got a fan, put them in front of the fan. And if they want to drink water, you can let them drink water, but don't force them to drink it. And don't try to give them any ice or any cold water. Cooling them down too quickly is just as bad as the heat stroke. So always use lukewarm or cool water here. So once you've got the dog wet down, call your vet and let them know that you're on your way so they can prepare for you. Even if you think the dog seems to be improving, they're getting better, go ahead and take them to the vet anyways. This is such a serious thing that we really don't want to take any chances with it. So just to recap, we want to be sure that we're avoid hiking in temperatures over 85 degrees. We want to try to hike at cooler times of the day, like the morning. Pick a route that's shady, which is 10 to 15 degrees cooler. We want to be sure that we're offering our dog twice as much water. And know that dogs that are older, younger, or obese, or brachiocephalic are at a higher risk for a heat stroke. And then be sure that we're watching for the signs of overheating, dehydration, and heat stroke, and that we're cooling our dog down immediately. And if we think the dog's having a heat stroke, that we're calling our vet and taking the dog to the vet right away. I hope these tips are helpful to keep your dog safe while you're hiking in the heat. This video is part of a series on hiking with your dog.